to Logic Heat Friends. This is the tutorial series designed to help you understand uh, and get you going with web development using Django Framework. So the very first question that naturally arises, what is Django? Why we are learning it? Is it really important to learn Django? So uh, I have highlighted some keywords here around which we will be doing the complete tutorial. So I would suggest you to read this definition again once we are done with this tutorial. So what points I have highlighted? First is it is a Python web framework. It helps in rapid development of web applications. It is fully loaded with all the features. And then the last thing is it is secure, scalable and highly versatile. So now these things we are going to discuss one by one and then we'll come to know why we are going to learn it and why is it important to understand. Okay, so the very first highlighted word uh, says here that Django is a Python web framework. You must be clear with these three words that this is something which is used for web development. Then the coding is done in Python. But what is a framework? That is something we need to understand. So, what is a framework? So, I would ask you a question. What is a framework in general? Framework is like providing a skeleton or a basic structure, maybe of a building or a vehicle or any object. Right? This is the uh, actual definition of a framework. Now, in the software world, framework is very much similar. Framework is, it helps in providing a skeleton of your code. So suppose you are doing a web development project, Django is a web framework. It will help you in providing a skeleton for your web project. Since the basic uh, skeleton is there, it's very easy uh, to create your very first project by making very few changes. That's why I was saying it is easy to learn. The, of course, the second point also makes sense that it would help in creating a, it will already have a working template application. Then there are some common functionalities which a web development framework should provide. What are those? Suppose user authentication is a very basic thing in web development, which I think almost all the sites need. Secondly, cookies management is the second thing that every web application should have. So all these common functionalities uh, which, which are used again and again in web development are provided inbuilt in those frameworks. Last point is you can create sophisticated applications by modifying and writing additional code to this skeleton. So skeleton is already there. You only need to add your features, your application specific code and your work is done. So framework is there to make your work easy. But the very first thing is to understand that framework and then use it for your further web development projects. Next keyword is rapid development of web applications. Django helps in rapid development because this framework is easy to grasp. All the common built in functionalities uh, are there and it's very easy to develop your first application. Thus the learning is quite fast when you go with Django. Third keyword is it is fully loaded with all the features. So in today's web world there's like lot of requirement from a web framework. As I already mentioned cookies and session management, user authentication or administration of the website. So there are plenty of uh, features that should be built in and those are all there. There are plenty of libraries available for common web development tasks. And that's why we say that it is fully loaded. Let's move to the next point, which is secure. Nowadays, cyber attacks to users and websites are very common. So it is important for your modern framework to provide security against such attacks. It would make more sense if I would, I'll give you an example of security, how Django is secure. But for that, let's understand a problem statement. There's one type of attack called CSRF attack. 
what is CSRF? It is cross site request forgery. And forgery means fraud. Cross site means there are at least two sites involved. And you must be understanding by these four words that there's some other site which is making a fraud request somewhere. Right? So this is called cross site request forgery. Now, how is it done? Suppose you have logged into a website. Let's hypothetically say its name is vulnerable.com. For login, what you give, you give your username and password in a form and that form data is sent to the vulnerable server. There it authenticates your information and returns you the session ID. Now in your browser, in your cookies, your session IDs session ID is stored clear now for all the further requests suppose it's a shopping website so for all the further requests your session ID would be going with the request that's how vulnerable server recognizes you second thing is this vulnerable site also provides you the option to delete your account this is something which we generally don't want to do if if this is a shopping website, you are continuously shopping on that website, you, you don't want to delete your account. Maybe you have saved something in your cart. Now, somehow you have logged into the evil. Now, evil site will do something which you don't want to do. Let's say it knows, the evil site knows what is the name of the API which needs to be triggered to delete your account over the vulnerable server. Let's say the name of the API is very simple slash delete whatever uh, let's say it's stored on the server uh, vulnerable.com and then delete is the name of the API. So it's very easy to predict the name of the API. Now if the evil sign knows the API, the name of the API, how it needs to be triggered and browser will add all these cookies which has the session id as well to this post request which evil is going to make now in one way evil is going to make request on behalf of vulnerable.com but vulnerable server will not come to know because it will see the session id which is stored in the cookie and with the post request whether the vulnerable site makes or the evil site makes session id will be passed with the api so vulnerable server will think that this request is coming from you from the user which has this particular session id and it will simply delete the account now you must have got it evil site predicted the api evil site got the session id it will not be able to read the session id though but with all the post requests we are making to the vulnerable server browser is going to add this session id so the session ID will also go and that's why evil site will, will accomplish the task of deleting your account. Now this was the problem. Now comes the Django with the solution. What is Django's solution? So if you know about how the, how the post requests are made, for deletion you must be sending your session ID, nothing else. But in case of Django, and if you are enabling your CSRF protection in Django, which I'll tell you how to enable, CSRF token is also sent with the post data as an hidden input. So in this case, attacker, since it is not able to read your session ID, it is the browser which is adding this cookie with all the post requests, but evil site will not be able to read it. So evil site will not be able to add this hidden data in your, in your post request and thus it will not be able to make requests to your vulnerable server. So the idea in case of Django, the solution of Django is it sends the hidden input or generally of your session ID in your post data one more thing guys out of curiosity if you if you want to see how 
uh, REST API uh, request looks like. This is the example what I was talking about. Let's say the name of it is slash account slash delete. This is the host name, content type, content length, and your cookie. These all things are getting sent. So the last point which I want to discuss is that Django is scalable. What do you mean by scalability? If I say scalability, what do you actually mean by it? In simple words, if I say it is like increasing your number of requests. So here in this diagram, if you can see, you have a web application which is hosted on a web server. And earlier, there were very few requests which, was, which were like coming to your web server, let's say around 1000 requests. But with time, uh, you have gained some popularity, your website has gained some popularity and now the number of requests coming has suddenly increased. So now there are 1 lakh requests which are coming to you every day as compared to 1000 requests which were coming earlier. How to scale it? If you see the performance could deteriorate if the number of requests increases. In that case, you need to do something at your web server. What you can do? You can add more infrastructure in your web server. When I say this, I mean you need to scale. You need to increase uh, your resources somehow on your web server for serving the increased number of requests. There are two types of scalabilities. First, you need to understand this. For one is called vertical scalability and the other is called horizontal scalability. In case of vertical scalability, it means to upgrade your existing resources. Okay, so if earlier you had the processor at your web server of 20 CPU cores, now you are increasing. Uh, the capacity of this resource and now there are 40 core processor uh, which you are going to use. This is your vertical scalability. Now comes the horizontal scalability. Horizontal scalability is adding more resources of same type parallelly. So if there is like one machine handling, handling your web server request, now we have added three similar web servers which would be taking your uh, taking users request this is called horizontal scaling since nowadays price of hardware uh, has become very cheap nowadays we prefer horizontal scaling but the important thing that you need to notice for the horizontal scaling it can only be supported if application your web application is written in a way that it it is stateless what do i mean by stateless it means that you are saving nothing locally on your web server for everything that you want to store maybe the image of the user or uh, or any data you want to store you are using third party services for it let's say for database you are not storing it locally on the web server you are using another server uh, which is maintaining your database completely. So every time you need to make some changes to your data, you are talking to your database. So in short, your web server is stateless, right? So you need to write your applications in a way that your application is stateless. Only then it would be horizontally scalable. And that's how you will be able to serve more requests. Django. Django supports application to be stateless. That's why we say that Django is scalable. So I would suggest you to go through this definition again. We have completed all the points and it would be good if you will devote some time in reading and grasping this uh, definition thoroughly. Thank you so much guys for tuning into Logic Heap. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.